today we're going to recreate the panning look using Luminar Neo. The panning is a creative technique that allows us to capture a sense of motion or movement in our shot. The idea is to use a specific shutter speed in combination with the camera movement to create an image where the subject is frozen and it's on the top of motion blurred background. Now, traditionally, this technique is done in camera. However, there is a way to recreate or create a similar look using Luminar Neo. So if you ever wanted to try on your own images, now it's your time. To start, let's take a look at few examples of panning while we remind ourselves the definition of the panning technique. Panning is a photographic technique where the camera moves horizontally along with a moving subject, creating a sense of motion in a captured image. This results in a sharp subject against the blurred background, focusing on the speed or dynamic nature of the subject. Panning is often used in sports photography or with fast moving subjects to convey a sense of action and energy in the shot. If you ever want to try panning with your own camera, I suggest you to try the track sports. This is because you get many attempts to improve your skills as the runners, horses, dirt bikes or racing cars pass by each lap. Also children or pets playing in the garden or at home are ideal opportunities to try this motion technique. And now it's time to start with the technique itself. As you can see, we are already in Luminar Neo in the catalog module. And as usual, we are starting by looking at our sample file. Now, here goes a reminder. If you want to follow me along on your own computer, all you need to do is to jump into the description of this video, follow the link there that will bring you to our Dropbox account and you can download the image there. Once you download it, add it to Luminar Neo, and then we can start. So what we need to do, just select the image and then move it into edit module. Here, we're going to navigate into our main editing toolbar, and then we're going to go into the creative section and here into the blur tool. After that, here we have a four different options, Gaussian, Motion, Twisted and Tilt Shift filters. To start with, we're going to be focusing on the motion blur. So let's select it. But for the time being, don't do anything else. First, what we want to do is to select the car. To do that, we're going to change from adjustments into the masking tab. And here we're going to start with the mask AI option. So simply click on it and give it a moment so the application can scan the image and prepare automatic mask for the different elements on it. It only takes a few moments, and as you can see, we have options between sky, flora, mountains, transport, natural ground, and man-made ground. What we're looking for is the transport, because we want to select the car. So let's click on it, give it a moment, and let's see what it will give us. Now the mask is OK. It's not perfect, but we will fix that in a moment. To do that, we're going to just click on this little arrow and then we're going to go into the brush. Now, just to explain the reason why I haven't applied the blur to start with, it would just make it a little bit more difficult to then do the masking. So it's easier to apply the mask first and then apply the blur. So come back to our masking. Um, let's go back just to make sure. Let's go into the mask actions where we can click on show. So that way we can see the mask. And then we can go into the brush. And the first thing we're going to do is to zoom in. So let's do that. We can do that with the little shortcut at the bottom of our screen, or you can use command or control plus. Once you have the brush selected, you can use the space bar on your keyboard to move around. And we're going to start from this part. Now it's going to take a little bit of time. So we're going to start together. And later on, I will speed up the process and then we will continue. However, from the beginning, first come first, we need to make sure that we are on paint as we're going to be selecting the mask. Then softness, let's go for 15. 
We don't want it on zero. We don't want super sharp mask. We want to go for the 15 as really we want something a little bit more natural. With the strength, we want to be on 100. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little closer and start with this part of the car. So I'm going to just click on the top here and then I'm going to hold the shift key on my keyboard and click at the bottom. Once I do that, you will see what it does. It basically creates a straight line between the two points. So that makes our life much easier. We can just brush around right now and we can this way um, just brush straight lines wherever it's possible. So for example, right here needs a little bit of fixing. So I will just click here and then hold shift and click on the other side. And again, we have a straight line there. Similarly, this part of the car, one click, click on the other side. And like this, you basically make sure the entire car is selected. Now, if you make a mistake and you go overboard, you can use Command or Control Z to undo, or let's just brush it back. You can switch your brush from paint into the erase, which you can do on the panel itself, or you can use X on your keyboard, and then basically just brush that part away. So now you know how to select the car. So go ahead, use the space bar, go around the entire car and make sure that the car is nicely selected. Once you finish, once again, we're going to return and continue. OK, so we are finished with the masking. As you can see, I zoomed out so you can see the full mask. And we actually have one more thing to do. And that's to unmask or remove the mask from the part of the window where you can see outside. So let's zoom in one more time using the same shortcut, Command or Control Plus. And the unselection or selection here doesn't have to be perfect. However, it's worth to do it to really have the effect at its best. So what we need to do first, we need to switch our brush to Erase. Maybe make the brush a little bit bigger or zoom in a little closer. Now, don't forget that you can adjust the size of the brush using the bracket keys on your keyboard. And then we just very quickly going to remove the part where you can see the grass. So let's do that. Uh, take your time, remove it. And then again, we're going to continue. And now that's done too. So we have the window nicely cut out. And as you can see, we only have the mask on the car. So if you're ready, if you have that finished, we're going to continue. So what we need to do again, we need to click on the little arrow in front of the brush to return into the masking menu. And here we're going to go to the bottom, click on the mask actions and select invert. So just like that, we have selected everything other than the car because we're going to apply the motion blur to everything other than the car. So let's do that. We need to switch our tab from masking into the adjustments. Again, we are still on motion blur. And what we're going to do, we're going to increase the amount probably all the way to the top. Once we do that, you will see the blur being applied to your image. It's already looking great. We have the car super sharp and then we have everything around with a nice motion blur. To adjust it even further, what we want to do is to adjust the direction of the blur. Ideally, the direction would be following the direction of the car. So we want a little tilt. So to adjust that, we're going to use the angle slider. So let's take it and let's move it around and see. Now, ideally, you would be looking at something which has a little bit of shape. So maybe the trees or the mountain. And let's have a look at it. Um, I think that probably something like this will do. Another good way to adjust the angle is to look at the parts of the car, which also getting a little bit of the blur. So for example, right here, the wing. And when you look at it, when you adjust the angle slider, you can see how the shape is moving around. So you want it to move in the direction of the car. So I think something like this will do. Let's have a look at it. Amount slider on 100 and angle slider on minus 11. Now let's have a look at the before and after. And we have the first step done. So we are done with the initial blur for the background. So let's close the tool, apply it to the image, and we're going to continue. In the next step, we're going to add a little bit of blur to the tires and the wheels. So they also need to be moving. Now to do that, again, we're going to use the blur tool. 
but this time the filter we're going to use is the twisted. So let's select that. And the first thing we want to do is to click on place blur center. When we do that, a little white dot will appear on the image. Now we can take it and drag it in the center of the twisted blur. So we want the center of it to be in the middle of the wheel. And from here, we're going to continue. First come first, let's zoom in a little closer. I think somewhere around here and double check that we are again in the center of the wheel. So somewhere here. Now, when it comes to the settings, I have a little formula which I think works the best. On the amount, we want to add 19. And in the angle, depending on the direction of the wheels, how they rotate, in this case, we're going to take the angle and bring it all the way to minus 90 because they turning this direction. So minus 90 is how much we want to use for this image. Now, of course, that it doesn't look great. As you can see, it applies to the entire car and entire image. So what we want to do, we only going to mask it to the tire. Now to do that again, we're going to use masking and brush. So let's go back to the blur tool, click on masking, select the brush, and let's make sure that we are on paint size. I think we make it a little bit bigger. I think we're going to bring down the softness to, let's say around 50 and strength on 100. Now we're going to click once and that will remove the effect from everywhere and it will only add it to the areas where we're going to brush. So you guessed it. Now all you need to do is to brush over those tires and wheels. So again, take your time, brush around and we'll continue in a moment. Now with that being done, I want to show you one more little tip. Now, somewhere in the center here should be the logo of the car and the kind of center point of the tire or the wheel. And that usually doesn't move or usually on the panning images, you can see it. So what we can do, we can just brush over this area and let's have a look where it is. It's somewhere around here. It's only this dark part. And basically we want to unmask that. So just brush over it with erase brush. Now keep the same setting on a softness on 50 and strength on 100. And then just quickly switch with X and brush back the areas you may be done by mistake. So it just makes it a little bit more realistic. The center again doesn't often move. So we're going to do something like this and leave it there. Now, all there is left to do is to zoom back out and have a look at it. I think it looks really, really cool. Again, we can look at the before and after. And I think this looks much more realistic. Now we're going to do exactly the same for the second tire and second wheel. But first we need to close the blur tool and then open it again, again, twist it. You already know the amount 19 here and minus 90 on the angle. Just to mention here, if the car would be going in the other direction, you would just take the angle slider and bring it to plus 90. But for us, it's this way, so minus 90 and same thing, click on place, blur center and navigate and locate it over the second tire. After that, zoom in and then use spacebar to move around. If you can't see the point, just click on the place blur center and click again and it will appear. Position it in the center of the wheel and tire. And I think this looks good. Now you already know the workflow. We're going to go into the masking, brush, paint, size. We're going to adjust as we go with the softness on 50 and strength on 100. Again, one brush stroke and then mask over the tire. As you notice with the first tire, I haven't gone all the way to the edge of the car because if you do that, you will start to get blurred there too. So this is why we're using the soft brush just to make sure that we can leave a little bit of space between the tire and between the edge of the car. So let's just do this very quickly. Brush over these parts. And then just like with the first tire, we're going to switch to our erase brush, make it much smaller and then paint over the center until you see the centerpiece. So that's right here. Switch back, fix the result to make sure that only the center is in focus or some sort of focus. And once you're done, once again, just hit the space bar, click 
and you will zoom out. And it's looking great. I really, really like that. So what we need so what we need to do is to close the blur tool and now we can have a look again at the before and after. And I think the panning looks really, really cool. If you need to go back and adjust any of the blur, for example, if you think that the background is too soft, you can then navigate to the top of your editing toolbar, select the edits, and here you're going to see the three blurs we used. First one at the bottom is the one we used for the background. Then the second and third are the one we used for the tires. So again, if we want to adjust the background, we would just open the first tool and use the amount slider here and basically just bring it down a little bit if we want it a little less blurry. But for me, I quite like the 100. So let's just leave it there and return back to tools. Now, before we're going to continue, I wanted to remind you that this tutorial is powered by our Luminar Neo Photo Manipulation Masterclass. This amazing course is designed to help you to unlock your creativity and boost your photo editing skills in Luminar Neo. With 15 fun and exciting projects and over 6 hours of high quality videos, you're going to love it. So if you're interested in learning more, head over to our website cleverphotographer.com and to get the best possible price, make sure that you follow the link in the description of this video. Now, before we finish, I'm going to give you one more tip on how to get the car stand out even further. And for this, we're going to navigate into the layers panel where we're going to right click on the layer and select duplicate layer. It's going to take a second and create exact duplicate of the original layer. So once we have it selected, let's navigate into our editing toolbar, go into the layer properties and change the blend mode from normal into the soft light. Now it looks a little bit too strong, but what you want to do is to take the opacity slider and bring it down. Let's say somewhere around 40. I really like this technique as I really think that it helps to the overall effect. Now, one more time, let's have a look at the before and after. And for today, we are done. And that's it for today. If you have any questions about today's tutorial or Luminar Neo in overall, then make sure that you write them in the comment section under this video. If you did enjoy today's tutorial, then please go ahead and like and share it. And also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our future content. For today, thank you very much for watching and I already can't wait to see you in the next video.